Okay, we are doing the Abyss Beta Final Strata 913 Cosmos stage. Uh, this team will meet all of the mission requirements, Lightning for Sword, Vanille for Wand, and Rydia for Green Crystal. Uh, I like Shiva over Ifrit just because the speed is helpful sometimes. Um, but ultimately, your choice of friend here is what's really important. Uh, the very first wave is especially dangerous near the end when they can apply blind for five turns. So you either need a friend who can delay them a long time, such as Keistis or Vayne, um, or you need a friend who can tank them, such as Zack. Um, if you're using the tank choice, uh, and that's what I used the first time I beat this stage, um, you're going to want to swap him in right after the squids use their slow attack. Because um, the next turn will be blind. If you're using a delayer, you need to swap them in a little sooner, right before they use their slow attacks. Um, which is what I'll be doing here. Okay, so my turn order is a little unusual. Ordinarily, uh, lightning does not go first. Nonetheless, it's fine. Just make sure you're breaking the enemies in the right order. Lightning's uh, skill order is a little flexible here. So if you're spamming four skills in a row, you can definitely start with Flourish of Steel because that will give you Army of One Plus. You'll be in Ravager. Um, I will be using Brave and HP Plus attacks in between. So I actually want to start with Spark Strike instead. And that's actually optimal here. I don't have an attack buffer. So that will make sure she gets extra attack. Um, Rydia is helpful because both of these guys happen to be weak to water. So this means that Lightning is still going to hit weakness even when she doesn't have her Thunder Enchant on yet. Uh, and then of course Vanille is here for her debuffs. Deprotect uh, not only boosts damage but also will dramatically cut the threat from them. Now here I want to be really careful. I do not want to get everyone broken. So I am going to use a Brave Plus here. Okay, so, this is pretty straightforward. I have a plus version of skill on lightning, so I'm always going to use that when it's available. And it hits weakness because of water enchant. Now here, lightning is not being targeted and she does have some Brave left over from the battery, so I might as well just use an HP attack. When you use Lightning's plus version, she still gets a stack of the buff, so she'll still get the plus skill next turn. Now it's okay to steal Brave Breaks from Lightning when she doesn't have her EX up yet, and she won't until the turn after, so that's perfectly acceptable to do. I am going to focus most of the damage on one, because when I bring in Keistus, I'm going to want to delay the other. And there's Army of One Plus. I'm actually going to use it on B, because I want to get a Brave Break out of it. But you can see I got Army of One Plus in a normal rotation, even though I started Ravager. Or start with Spark Strike. Now I have a couple choices for what to do here. I am actually going to use another Spark Strike for a little extra damage. Now this is the turn when you're using a Delayer, I feel, is best to swap in your Guest. So I'm going to start with her EX because she needs the buff. But also because it applies a strong slow. I'm going to start on the other one that I haven't been focus firing. Um, because that's the one I'm going to need to delay the most. Now, Summon Dragon here, the water weakness is irrelevant at this point, of course, but uh, it does provide an additional offensive buff for the party, so it's always good to use. And there's Flourish Plus. And then as you see, I'm just going to use all my Degenerator Whips on B for the rest of the fight, and that should keep him delayed enough that no one ever gets blinded. This is the best turn to use Summon Leviathan. It's not going to steal a break from Lightning, and it does give all the buffs then to Keistus as well. Alright, so here I need a Brave Break, so I'm going to use Flourish. 
If I didn't need as much damage to break it, I absolutely would have used just an HP plus there. And now this thing will just get delayed into oblivion, and so therefore it will never get a chance to blind anybody. So, you'll notice Radius EX is up. I'm not going to use it here. I want to save it for the first attack in the next wave. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and... Uh, I guess I'll use Flare. So this wave is actually pretty dangerous uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, the Phantom Knight, if you've never done Noctis' event, uh, hides his next turn. Um, he also will always HP attack when he can. Um, so... You need to be really, really careful and basically always keep somebody who he's targeting from having no brave because they'll get broken and killed. The other risk here is if this bone dragon uh, gets a brave break on somebody and he goes next, he will kill them. Um, so you have to be really careful about that. Um, the other annoying thing is uh, the bone dragon here uh, resists physical and the knight resists magic, so you do need to uh, handle your damage appropriately. I think he's more of a threat, so I go after him first. Now, Summon Dragon's going to be helpful here, because with the Water Enchant in place, um, even my mages will be able to deal some respectable damage to him. The other thing I can do to make it a little easier is Area Attacks will still deal magic damage to the uh, second guy, the Bone Dragon, so they'll still build some Brave that way. Now, I'm going to finish off here with a homing whip on him from Keystis, because I definitely want to make sure he gets slowed. Now this is really, really dangerous, because that would kill somebody. It's my guest, so I think it's okay. Let me check on I think I'll still have enough to get the score, even with that. Uh, that said, that doesn't normally happen. Normally, his phantom turn is about a turn later than that. Um, and you're okay then. <laughs> uh, this went horribly wrong, but I should still be able to get the score, even with all that damage. We'll find out for sure here in a moment, though. one is to de-protect the this guy just again it's less than the can take. So you can see how hard that hits even with the tap down. It's a very dangerous. Now that did not break any but if it had, I'd probably be dead right now. So, uh, yeah, let's do the game here. Now, Vanilla's never going to be able to break that guy herself, so I'm going to have Lightning help her out. Now I have a couple of options, I could cast Death on one of them, 
Or I could use Dispel to build up a little more Brave and deal more damage to the left guy. Which I'm actually going to do here. Had that not been enough to kill it, I think I would have been better off brave attacking there. Now here's where I need to watch my skills. I need at least two of each ability left on Radia to make it through the final wave, so I do want to slow down a little bit on them. Lightning can kind of go willy-nilly though here. So obviously I used that Brave Plus there to conserve skills on Rydia. Okay, so the final wave, you have two routes you can go. You can try to summon and focus down the ultimate weapon so that he can't full power one-shot kill somebody. Or you can try to focus down the Malboro so nobody gets blinded. Uh, those are really your two options. Um, I have the ability with Vanille to dispel the defensive buffs on the Ultima weapon, so I find it better to go for the Malboro with this team. But if you can handle the blind, such as you bought, brought Yuffie or someone, or like Lena, and you're immune to debuffs, then you should absolutely go for the Ultima weapon first. And landing water weak is going to help a lot right at the start here. And this is the eternal summon. Now hopefully I'll be able to kill the Malboro before it gets a turn. So I'm going to use this spell just to give everyone more brave. You'll notice I'm a lot less conservative with lightning skills now. Now, I shouldn't need to break B yet, even though he's about to do a turn, because he's going to power himself up first. And then Vanille can dispel the defensive buffs. Now, letting this guy get Brave Breaks on you occasionally is actually helpful for Lightning. Um, however, he broke Lightning that time. But uh, if it breaks someone other than Lightning, that can actually be handy. Because it will let Lightning get Brave Breaks every single turn. As long as he's not using an area attack, you're fine.
And this is nice, because Assassination can't break him, so this allows Lightning to get a free break in here. And this is, uh, I've, I've seen some people on Reddit talking about unequipping her speed passives like uh, you used to with level 50 lightning. This is why I don't, because uh, those extra turns are really clutch in a moment like this where you're just trying to burst something down. And that's that. Now we'll see if we hit the score here uh, since Kistis got destroyed there in wave 2. Um, like I said, that actually doesn't usually happen. Um, but since it happened to my friend unit, I just let it go. Okay, and as you can see, we still got 290,000 points here. Um, we still hit all the requirements, and that was with Kistis getting just demolished by that monster. Um, that's also why I recommend bringing Zack instead. Um, because if you swap Zack in near the end of the, the first wave, you'll still have him for two to three turns on the second fight. And that will eat a couple of those nasty hits, and he'll self-heal. So... Um, that's the whole fight. Thanks for watching.